Hello everyone, I'm Daniel. Hi, and that's Daryl over there. I guess I'd point the right direction. Um, Microsoft recently announced some exciting functionality and we really just wanted to talk about it in a way that uh, we can help you understand what it is. And that's Copilot Pages. And um, how can we uh, explain it to you and what we know now uh, before your users get their uh, hands on it? Yeah, so what we're going to do is just bring up the uh, the launch video that talked a little about how Copilot Pages works, and we just want to step through it and uh, discuss some of the things as we see it appear. Um, so let's just run through this. So Copilot Pages, uh, the idea with it is that you are running a prompt like you normally would, but one of the weaknesses that we have today is that that is well, weakness or strength. It is your own personal experience. You run through, you get your answers, um, and there they are in the prompt response. Uh, and great, um, I can use them. I can copy and paste them somewhere. Mm -hmm. But Copilot Pages introduces this new button, Edit in Pages, which lets you, and we'll just play this through, creates this side panel, uh, which uh, shifts the content over from the prompt response and uh, as you follow through with this, and you'll start to recognize what this is, it is powered by Loop. So we're sharing this page with some people in our team. We're mentioning them in the page so that they're going to get that notification as well. And you can already see them in there co-authoring with uh, that content. We know the video goes further, doesn't it, Daniel, and shows yeah. a few other scenarios about switching between um, from web to work and referencing documents and again drawing all kinds of summaries from different locations but let's just go a bit further along and this is really the key thing we want to talk about which is the page and the questions the community has for that yeah so I mean the biggest question that I think people had that we want to answer is what powers copilot pages you mentioned loop okay but what what part of loop because there's components there's workspaces there's mm. like w what powers this thing this loop of pa this copilot pages yeah yep so it, it isn't really mentioned in the video but there is some technical documentation that we'll uh we'll you know, link to it back below. over and show yep. you yeah we'll, we'll yep. link to this so, below but yep yep that, that's it, your tech community document, um, and it is information that's really important for this conversation for IT admins. But let's just go back to this. It is what we've experienced up till now when we add um, a loop component to a conversation in Teams and Outlook, uh, maybe it's in meetings as well. It is a loop file, right? It is, it is a file that lives somewhere, and that is embedded in our chat, in our email, and places that we're working with it. Now, it operates the same here with loop files, or rather, copilot pages. That is a loop file sitting somewhere, and that's well, why we're getting all the, that loop goodness. I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> okay, uh, live somewhere. Where? Where are these loop files stored? And you talked about sharing. Who, who has access um, mm. you know, when we um, create these as copilot pages? Right, so the loop components we add to those other places we work, Teams, chats and files and, and um, emails, um, those are stored in our OneDrive, the OneDrive we can get to, where we can go in and see my files. And for each of those applications, they have usually have a folder there where an attachment is stored. And in this case, it's a loop component. Well, this is different. This is actually shifting now into something new, and this is where that IT article, um, tech community article, goes, goes into a bit of this detail, Daniel. Um, where it might have traditionally been stored in a OneDrive, the simplest place to share content with an ad hoc audience, you know, one that isn't necessarily in your team. You just want to invite people to it. Um, now, uh, the, the loop files are going to be stored in a personal workspace in SharePoint Embedded, a user-owned workspace in SharePoint Embedded. So um, SharePoint Embedded is that a place for storage in your tenant in Microsoft 365 
that mm-hmm. it has SharePoint on the name of it and underlying technology is that's the power, but it's not a SharePoint site. It's not something where you can, you know, you're going to go and see libraries and lists and all that kind of thing in the UI, like, like regular SharePoint sites, right? This is a, a storage medium, but I think the, the key here is, and you said it, it, it's not in OneDrive. However, it's a user owned uh, space in SharePoint Embedded. So it's acting sort of like OneDrive in that it's user owned and I can share it out, but I'm not going to OneDrive to see it. I'm not going to OneDrive to to check out these pages. Correct, yeah. Uh, and this is what has been, I guess, a challenge with, with Loop to date and components. Uh, the challenge being that if I have created a component in a conversation, in a meeting, that those files are sitting in my OneDrive. And how do I move that into a shared space like a team or a SharePoint site? I, I can't without breaking the loop functionality. Yeah. Now what's happening here with our Copilot pages is something new, something that Microsoft is transitioning to, this introduction of a user-owned workspace. And I know that this diagram is quite small in the article, but I've zoomed in here to try and show it, um, that there is this dotted line that shows where SharePoint Embedded starts. And over here on the right, we have where the um, loop workspaces normally would be, or they are now. Mm-hmm. That is a, a workspace that you invite people to. What's new is this user-owned space in SharePoint Embedded that will be used for these on-the-fly ad hoc collaboration needs that is going to be... Um, yeah, it's in the same space, really, as where yeah. your workspaces are for Loop. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and this this is people need to understand this. It's not going to you're not going to be in OneDrive looking for these files. The way it's going to be found is actually an admin center, um, in in the admins being able to see where these user owned um, SharePoint embedded um, workspaces are. So. Uh, I think that's key and something that people are asking a lot of questions about, like, what is the story of, okay, it's a user owned space. How does it become, Mm. if, if it can, how does it become a team owned space or a workspace that is owned um, outside of this user context? And, you know, I would say my, my thoughts, it it, it doesn't seem there is a story there right now at being able to do something like that, that doesn't break you know, the flow of, of um, uh, the loop functionality, right? Correct, yeah, and, and I agree with that analysis. At the moment, we, we don't see that and we don't know it, but, but I would say that looking at, at the reason why they're creating this user-owned workspace mm-hmm. would be that in future we should expect to see the ability to move a loop yeah. page, a co-pilot page in this case, into a shared workspace uh, with a team. Without um, it so losing any functionality. Step. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with, with, this is the first step to it. Whereas today, if I take a loop component and I can literally move that file, just like I can with a Word doc or an Excel doc, I can move yeah. it from my OneDrive in into Teams and it will still work the same way. With yeah. a loop component, I can move the file, but it no longer embeds. So I've got one last question for you. Um, and it's a doozy, which is, you know, we have these, you know, sh- these copilot pages, which are loops. Great. How can they be governed? Can they, can we apply retention? Can we, you know, put sensitivity labels, you know, uh, how, you know, how will purview work with this content? Um, is that, is that something, uh, you know, everybody's asking these questions. Is that something that it will, um, be, uh, enabled with our, compliance scenarios. Yeah, absolutely. Um, This is something that the Loop team has been working towards to enable, for example, the um, retention labels. Uh, So those have come, I believe they've come, or if not, they're very close. Uh, So that means that being able to apply those labels, uh, you will get to leverage all of the different policies and things you've put in place for other content and other places in SharePoint. You'll be able to... um, you know, say I want to retain this for a certain period of time. I want to treat it this way for a certain period of time. Yeah. I want to p- apply this level of security across it. 
Uh, and so that's why it's been so important for them to work towards this to give large organisations that, that level of comfort, that it will be managed yeah. in the same way even though the content is sitting in SharePoint embedded. Yeah, and it and I like this on this uh, page, again, link down below, this talks about what is available now and what's coming in Q4 of 2024. Um, check out that information as well on the, on the, the page. Um, and to, to learn how we can, you know, govern it. Cause I think it's a, it's a big deal and it's a big topic people are asking about. Thank you, Daryl, for jumping in and having a quick conversation with me, uh, to really help people understand what these copilot pages are, what's powering them, you know, where they are, who has access and how we can govern it, uh, moving forward from an IT, uh, perspective and, and an admin perspective. So, uh, greatly appreciate your time. Thank you for, uh, jumping in with me. Appreciate it. You're welcome. See you again, everyone. <laughs>